then I came in like this and I saved the day. Oh, Gaga, you're so cool. Can I have a kiss? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who is it? It is the KGB. What? I knew that group order wasn't legit. I'm just kidding. It's Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice? Remember that show you used to like? Used to like? I never stopped or got distracted by any other fandoms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's back. We have something new to offer you. Is it Ice Adolescence? No. Oh. It's a picture. Is it a picture from Ice Adolescence? No. Oh. Well, at this point, the fandom's gonna take what it's gonna get. Whoa! Amazing! Camaraderie, togetherness, putting aside our differences despite borders to come together. That is something that the Olympic art of Uranice has done for the world. Would you look at this? Just look at it. We're gonna do a deep dive on this singular image and find out why it drove the Uranice fandom absolutely bonkers this weekend. Before we go any further, I have to talk about today's sponsor, Boksu, which is an incredible way to try authentic Japanese snacks each month. The stuff in here isn't just like foreign and exotic and cool. It actually tastes good. Like I was like, excited to film this video because I'm freaking hungry. Doriyaki is a snack where two soft Costella pancake sandwich a filling. Let's find that one. <laughs> I heard the word pancake and I'm in. Oh my god, look, it is a little pancake. Mmm, it's so savory. I've said this a few times, but it's the opposite of the artificial flavors that you know. Like, I know what artificial strawberry tastes like. You can get it at any gummy at the corner store, but that is like eating a real strawberry. Wasabi potato chips. Mmm. I would buy these in bulk, 100%. You know like when you eat too much wasabi and it burns your nose, but the flavor is so good? No burning nose sensation, all flavor. Daifuku is a type of mochi with a sweet filling that's usually anko or red bean paste. That is a heavy mochi. If it went through Boksu, I've tried lots of different mochi. This is the freaking heaviest. Mmm, look how full that is. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you so much, Boxu, for sponsoring this video. I freaking love snacks. I love sharing things with people. And if you use my code KICKTER10 and my link down below, you'll get 10% off your own authentic Japanese subscription from Boxu. Don't miss out on this amazing snack journey through Japan. Now, the reason why this image is so cool is that it's a look into the future from the Victor and Yuri that we knew from 2017. But the biggest thing that I wanna note is that it has been five years since the events of the story and Yuri is different now. He's commanding. Victor is someone who keeps him grounded and focused because now he has a wider range of emotions, not just anxiety. You can see the growth of his character. He's at the Olympics. Years have passed and he's grown as a person and a skater. Now to go over some Easter eggs in this image, one thing in this show that I absolutely loved was that once they exchanged rings, Victor stopped wearing gloves in order to show it off. However, perhaps five years down the line of being married, he doesn't need to flash it off and Yuri's been like, Victor, you gotta wear gloves or you're gonna get arthritis because you're an old man. <laughs> and in this image, you can't see Yuri's ring, but in this official image, you can. So no fear, they still have their rings. Victor is just being a responsible old man who somehow still has not gone bald yet. Victor is grabbing onto his arm, but he's also holding Yuri's bottle cap. And you might think, why is that so special? He's just his coach and he's unscrewed his water bottle for him. Yeah, but also it's kind of cute. We also have the Makachin tissue box and Yakov, who is not wearing an N95. Someone else pointed that out and I found that kind of hilarious. Homophobia doesn't exist in the Yuri on Ice universe, but COVID does. Yurio looking pissed as ever. Odebeck is even on the ice. And this skater here with the actually slightly less juicy ass than I was expecting has been confirmed as Chris. So how cute is that? Pretty much the whole cast made it to the Olympics. Now, one other thing that I found very interesting is the expression on Yuri's face. You could view it as he's kind of angry and Victor's holding him back or he's interested in something and he's trying to figure it out and Victor is there grounding him. Well, I asked my followers on Instagram and here's what they thought. There's a hole in the ice and he wants it zammed. And all my years of ice hockey being a Canadian, I've never used zammed as a verb. But this is also a shout out towards the use your hand you discourse that happened because he tripped on a pretty big hole during his short performance. He's trying to do the creation painting, but Yurio is ignoring him. He's actually squinting at someone across the rink and asking, hey, what is that? Which I think is valid. We know Yuri has 
terrible eyesight and tends to squint when he's looking. He's trying to direct us to the last fuck he gave. <laughs> I think this sums up Yuri's confidence in the five years we've seen him since his anxiety riddled days. Now, the reason why this image is almost more exciting than Ice Adolescence is that Ice Adolescence is a flashback. It's about Victor, and while I am dying to know more about him, my biggest fear is that in Ice Adolescence, we might not see the future. But in this glimpse here, we do see the future. We know they're together, which should be obvious, but seeing them thriving and happy and definitely still married really made my heart happy. This is now a new canon foundation to make fan work from, and that's why the fandom exploded the way it did. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these kind of videos, be sure to click subscribe and hit the notification so you don't miss out. Also, I've got my own merch store with soulmate shirts, and you can join my YouTube membership if you'd like to help support me. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye!